Welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we will look at the design of a boost converter and we will see how we can get the specific values and also the graphs here for this circuit, which is the boost converter circuit. We will see that step by step in our calculations and also verify this in MATLAB using Simulink. Okay, this is now the circuit of a boost converter in a very generic and simple form. We see here the ideal switch, the inductor, the diode, the capacitor, and also our load resistor. This configuration is very similar to the buck converter, so we have the same components actually, but they are oriented and situated in a different way. So the switch is here, it was before here, the inductor is here, it was before there, and the diode was here, like so. So this is actually the same components, but oriented in a different way to create this boost converter. Before we dive into the objective and the design of this boost converter, let's first look at the graphs. The inductor voltage is shown here, and this red graph is actually explained like so. When the switch is closed, which, which is between zero and the duty cycle, then the Vs will be applied across this inductor, so that will be then also Vs. So the inductor voltage will be Vs, which is our input voltage. And when the switch opens, that means when we have a situation where you have a cross inductor, which is Vs minus Vo, which is then shown here, and that is in, in this case, in, in this format. Now, similar case we have for the inductor current that goes up and down, so these are the waveforms. And for the diode, it is zero when the switch is closed, normally because then you have only a current flow in this branch. And the switch opens, then you have the current flow like so, and that is actually also the current of the inductor which goes from the IL maximum to a minimum value of your inductor. A similar shape is also shown for the capacitor. Let's now look at the solutions step by step. First the calculations. We need to first determine our duty cycle for this uh, boost converter. The duty cycle is given by this equation. Duty cycle is 1 minus the output voltage over the input voltage. In this case we have the 1 minus 25 over 15 because that was our DC input voltage and that is 0.4 which is then 40% of our duty cycle. Now we need to also select the switching frequency for this switch and that is an arbitrary value. In this case I will select 100 kilohertz so that is what I have chosen here. For our load resistor we need to determine what the minimum value of this load resistor must be in order to have the specification for the output voltage and output current. Now that's just using ohms low, 25 over 1, so that will be then 25 ohms. And this is the minimum allowed load resistor. So if you go down, you need to require more current and it cannot be supplied by this boost converter because we designed it for output current of 1 amp. Now next one is the peak-peak inductor current. That is given by a specific percentage of the output current. In this case, it is also arbitrary, so I choose here 20% of the output current or load current, so in this case 0.2. So this is also arbitrary, you can also take for 10% or 30%, it doesn't really matter in most cases. The average inductor current is given by this expression, this is actually from the power balance. You see the inductor current is equal to the output voltage times output current divided by the source uh, voltage. So it will be then 25 times 1 over 15, so 5 over 3 amps or approximately 1.667 amps. This can be also calculated in this, using this formula. So you see here now also the input voltage, but also the duty cycle and the resistor. The exact same result will be also produced here. Now for the inductor, we need to now determine the value of the inductor. That's given by this expression for the boost converter. You see here again the switching frequency, the ripple, peak-peak uh, ripple inductor current, the duty cycle and also the input voltage and that will produce here exactly 300 micro -henries. This is the minimum inductor you require in order to stay in the continuous current mode. Now if you want to have some safety margin you can go up a little bit so I have selected a little bit larger value which is 330 micro -henries. Now we need to then recalculate our peak peak inductor current, the new one, because I have now changed my inductor from 300 micro to 330 micro because this was calculated based on the ripple, peak peak ripple inductor current of 0.2 amps. So we take this formula 
and we rewrite it such that we have this delta IL and then we use the L of 330 micro Henry's. So everything is actually the same. Now we get the smaller peak peak inductor current because the inductor goes up and there will be now here 0 0.182 or 182 milliamps. Okay, the maximum inductor current can be calculated using this, which is the average inductor current plus the peak peak ripple inductor current over two. Now when you now substitute the value of the average and the peak peak inductor current over two, you get 1.758 amps. In a similar form for the minimum inductor current, then you need to use a minus sign here and that is shown here, which is the 1.576 amps. And this is larger than zero. So we have already said that we need to stay in the continuous conduction mode. So that means the inductor current must be larger or equal to zero. And that means we are indeed in the CCM or continuous conduction or current mode. The RMS inductor current is also important for our rated current of the inductor when you select that in a practical case. And that is given by this expression, which is for this triangle uh, waveform. So this is the square root of the average value squared plus the peak peak inductor current over two divided by the square root of three and a quantity squared. This is the formula we, need, we can use for this waveform. And when you do that, you get very close to 1.667 amps, which is almost the same as actually the inductor average current. Now the capacitor can be calculated using this formula and that will determine also your ripple at the output. So based on the condition of the ripple voltage in the percentage in this case, we need to also determine what the required minimum capacitor value must be. This is the formula and this is the duty cycle we have determined, which is 0.4, the R 25 ohms and delta VO over VO was 0.02. And the switching frequency we have selected is 100 kilohertz. So we come up here at exactly eight microfarads. So in this case, I will also, this is the C minimum, so the minimum capacitor we need, but I will also select this minimum value for the future design. So the peak peak capacitor current can be calculated and also seen actually in the graph that this is the delta IC, which is the IL max. So from here all the way to here, this peak peak value is also the maximum inductor current, which is the 1.758 amps. Now, important parameter of a capacitor is for the output ripple voltage is the equivalent series resistor of the capacitor. And that is related in an approximate way by this, but first let's calculate the delta VO, so the peak peak ripple at the output. That is then 0.02 times the output voltage we need, so that means then 0.5 volts peak peak at the output. Now the peak peak output voltage is related that RC, which is smaller than RC, which is this equivalent series resistor, times the peak peak capacitor current or the maximum inductor current. Now we can calculate this smaller than RC, so the ESR, ESR for our uh, capacitor, which is then given by this expression. In this case, it must be then 0.2 Eight four, so 284 milli ohms, but this is the maximum allowed value for the capacitor. So you can better go a little bit down. Okay, let's now look at the simulation result. These are the values we have selected and also calculated on our, based on our selection. And this is now the circuit in the simulink. You see here the uh, inductor, the switch, the diode, the capacitor and also the resistor. We also have some meters to measure the currents and the voltages and this is the scope to display them. I will show you that in the next slide uh, shortly. We have also measured here the RMS current of the capacitor and there is also RMS current of the inductor here which is 1.666 amps which is close to what we have calculated here so this is perfectly fine. Okay let's now dive into the plot. So first we look at the steady state value of the output voltage and the output current. And you see here the waveform again uh, responds for a second or higher order uh, system. So it's actually an underdamped system here. Now looking at this yellow and the light blue graph, you see the load current for the yellow one, which is one amp. You can also see that here in the display. 
on the, in, the, in the table here and also for the light blue one which is 25 volts but that is exactly what we wanted here in our design so this is as we wanted the next plot is about the peak peak inductor current so we go one by one this is a red one so you see the red one is going in a triangle fashion as we have seen here and the values are shown here in detail for each label so the maximum is here 1.788 amps and the minimum is here 1.607 amps and a peak peak here can be calculated using the maximum minus the minimum and it will be then 0.1811 amps so 181.1 milliamps which is very close to what we have calculated as 182 milliamps so that is also checked the next one is about the peak peak inductor voltage that is this green graph and again the label values are shown here but let's first determine as we have seen in this graph here in the red graph what the formula should be or what the value should be so the vl max so the maximum inductor voltage will be the vs which is 15 as shown here and the minimum inductor voltage will be then vs minus vo which will be then 50 minus 25 minus 10 volts is that the case also in the simulator let's see again these are labeled here as one and two and the values are shown here in this table and that is 15 in this case exactly and also minus 10.1 volts so is perfectly fine and also according to our calculation and expectations according to the graph so we can move on okay now the peak peak load voltage so we'll let's zoom in a little bit more that's the light uh, blue one we'll zoom in and again here the labels for the, the values for the label one and label two label one give you 25.39 volts and the minimum output voltage will be then 24.8 89 volts so the peak peak here is indeed 0.5 volt as we wanted so this is the maximum allowed so we actually stay also in that vicinity so that's also checked now let's also look at the peak peak load current this is related using ohm's law actually so you go now from this light blue line to the yellow line again the values are shown here the maximum is this and the minimum is that one so the peak peak value will be 20.06 milliamps here the final one is about the peak peak capacitor current so you see here the shape which is similar to this shape so it is not a square wave actually so it is it is actually horizontal in the negative side but it goes up and then has a slope which is also declining so it's actually a similar uh, way as we here have so this label one and label two are also shown here in the table the maximum value will be here 0.0 7670 amps and the minimum is minus 0.9991 amps but the peak peak value is 1.766 amps also shown here and this peak peak value of the capacitor current is the maximum capacitor current almost so it's close to that one so that's also what we have uh, seen in the analysis before all right this was our example considering the design of a boost converter we have worked out the component values for our specifications and verify these in the Simulink simulations as shown here. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share our videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.